Hello everyone, welcome to the semicolon. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about perceptron and the gradient descent algorithm. So what I actually wanted to do was to make a tutorial on neural networks. But the perceptron and gradient descent algorithm provide a basic to neural networks and the backpropagation algorithm, which is used to train neural networks. And that is why we are here learning perceptrons. So uh, what perceptrons are is this, what the image you're seeing on your screen. So this is a basic model of perceptron. x1 to xn are the features and this is a feature vector. w1 to wn the weights and this is a bias node. So this is used for imparting a constraint to it. So ju just that it is not dependent on any feature. Uh, we add all of these up and then pass it through an activation function. And this activation function uh, can be sigmoid and in this case it is uh, the binary step function which is 1 if the perceptron value output is greater than 0 and minus 1 or 0 otherwise it can be anything. So this is how we train our perceptron. The weights are added through this equation actually updated through this equation and where delta w is learning rate multiplied by the error which is the target value subtracted by the output of our perceptron into the feature and this is what gives us delta w. So gradient descent algorithm tells us how to train the perceptron. So let's look at it. We initialize the weights with random values. So each of w1 to wn are now a random value. Then we choose the value of eta, the learning rate. So what we get is uh, for lower learning rates, the learning rate, uh, the learning process is generally slower, but it's more efficient than the higher learning rates. In higher learning rates, the training finishes off fast, but then the accuracy is at risk. So there are trade-offs which you'll have to make while choosing learning rates, and uh, uh, according to the problem, you can and you can test for different learning rates as well. So we choose a learning rate and then we update the weight for each training example. And we calculate the change in weight, then update the weight and we keep on doing this till our error no longer reduces. So this is a graph of error versus the weights, the change in weights. So what happens is we are somewhere start off around here where the error is high and we have to reach where error is low and beyond this point the error no more increases the change in error is almost constant for a long time and there we stop if we do not stop we will go again to a, rate, a place where the error is high so now uh, let's try and apply perceptrons where uh, uh, on our hand, handwriting recognition data set which we had used last time so here is the code for the handwriting recognition data set and I'd like to copy most of it because we are doing the same thing again just this thing and we won't need matplotlib because we won't be seeing anything and the data is still in mnist.csv now this was our data from the last tutorial what I'll be doing is I'll be just copying this because we are doing the same thing again uh, splitting the data into test and train and now we have to use our perceptron let's make it as PER We write PR.fit to fit our model into the perceptron and uh, we have to pass X train and Y train. So what it's doing is taking some time to fit and we're done. 
So perceptron, you want to check the prediction results. These are our prediction results. Let's store the actual results, the training data here. So this is our training data, sorry, yeah, the test data. And uh, we copy this code just to check the error. Yeah, let's initialize count to zero. And uh, how we measure accuracy is by dividing count by the length of predictions, which is total. And as you can see, we got a pretty bad accuracy here, which is around 86%. And uh, our random forest algorithm gave us 96%, so a whole 10% increase in accuracy which is quite huge and uh, the perceptron in itself is uh, is not that powerful algorithm but then when we use this in many forms like say if we use many of these then it forms a neural network and then it becomes really powerful so uh, let's do that in the next tutorial till then uh, hit like subscribe and if this tutorial helped you, share it with your friends. Thank you.